In this clip I will discuss limits and some properties. So some algebraic properties of limits. So that you don't need to prove the value of a limit like we did before, but that you can derive properties from known limits. So suppose now that we have two sequences, a sequence AN and a sequence BN, a n has a limit L and B n has a limit K. Well, one property is that if we add two of those rows, elements A n tend to be equal L and the elements B n tend to be close to K. So the elements A n plus B n tend to be close to L plus K. So this is the first property that actually we can calculate the limit of the sum of two sequences once the separate parts have a limit and these are known. Another property is that if we take a constant times a sequence so the limit for n to infinity of c times a sequence a n equals c times l and this holds for all constants C in R. Well, the intuition is, of course, when A n is close to L, then C A n is close to C L. Yeah, another thing is that we can also take products. So the limit of n to infinity of A n times B n is the same as the limit of n to infinity A n times the limit n to infinity of b n equals l times k. So now we have properties regarding addition, multiplication by a constant, and taking a product. So what about dividing two rows. So what is the limit of n to infinity of a n divided by b n? Well, this will work as long as b n does not converge to the zero. So if k is unequal to zero, then we may calculate the limit n to infinity of a n divided by b n as the limit of a n yeah, the limit of a n divided by the limit of b n. Yeah, so a n divided by the limit n to infinity of b n, which equals L divided by k. Yeah, but be sure that k must be unequal to zero. Well, finally, the limit of a constant row so suppose I have a constant a n equals c for all n, then the limit of this constant row is of course this constant. Yeah. So I will show now through an example uh, how you can use those properties, those algebraic properties of limit to derive some nice results about geometric series. Yeah, so look at the geometric sequence a n equals r to the power m minus 1 where r in absolute value is smaller than 1. So in this case we know that the limit of a n equals 0. Now consider the sequence of partial sums. Yeah. Consider the partial sums. What are the partial sums? Well, Sn, as a partial sum, is the sum of the first n elements in this geometric sequence. So Sn equals a1 plus a2, etc., until the nth element, an. Well, we've seen that actually there's a nice formula. So Sn equals 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. Now we try to calculate the limit n to infinity of Sn. 
Well, this is no more than the limit of n to infinity of 1 minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. So this equals the first part. So, so 1 divided by, by 1 minus r plus minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. So now we have two pieces and we calculate the limit of those two pieces. Yeah, the first piece is a constant row, so I have the limit of n to infinity of 1 divided by 1 minus r plus the limit of minus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r. Yeah, and actually we need to know that these limits exist, so, but it, that's actually true because first we have the constant, the, constant, the limit of a constant row a sequence is 1 divided by 1 minus r and uh, for the second limit we can take out the constant minus 1 divided by 1 minus r what we are left with is the limit of n to infinity of r to the power n but the limit of n the limit for n to infinity of r to the power n is 0 so actually as a result we get 1 divided by 1 minus r so actually, the limit of the partial sums of a geometric sequence exists for r in absolute value smaller than 1. And this one is called the sum of the geometric sequence. So now there's a warning. And the warning is about too, to be too greedy in applying the rules for limits, so something you never supposed to do is the following. So consider the limit of n to infinity of 1 over n times n. Yeah, so 1 divided by n times n is always equal to 1, so the limit should be actually 1. What you should not do is take the product of the two limits and calculate it, try to calculate it as a limit for n to infinity of 1 over n times the limit of n to infinity of n and write it as 0 times infinity and act as if you can calculate actually 0 times infinity. Well, this is quite problematic, so I would stress that you don't do this. So actually something goes wrong here and what goes wrong here it has to do with the fact that we can actually split up these terms and calculate the separate limits but here the limit does not exist so we cannot apply the rule that the limit of the product of a n times b n equals the limit of a n times the limit of b n yeah we needed that actually both limits in the product exist which is typically not the case over here.